All right, guys, today I wanted to make a video about who will be like the next sort of like breakout player in the Premier League uh, this upcoming year in 2022. So, for example, in 2021, uh, this year it was probably between Emile Smith Rowe at Arsenal, uh, more recently Conor Gallagher at Crystal Palace, although he wasn't bad for West Brom at the start of the year either. Um, and there, there, there have been a few other players as well, I guess. Uh, Ibire as a sort of no, he was more twenty end of twenty twenty, I guess. But um, you, you get the idea. So I've basically picked five players, and probably going to pick the mo the one who's most likely to uh, become like a big name player by the end of next year. So we'll start off uh, with. A player who's played for Tottenham for a while now, probably a couple of years, uh, Jaffet Tanganga. It's, uh, well, he sort of plays right back or centre back. Uh, I prefer him when he plays centre back personally. Um, the first time I watched him was a couple of years ago. He played, I think it might have been his first start in the Premier League. He played uh, against Liverpool in a, a 1 0 win. Uh, for Liverpool at uh, Tottenham Stadium and uh, he played really well that game he, he was one of Spurs' best players that day and uh, since then he hasn't uh, really become as good as I thought he initially thought he would um, but it, it, he's played a few games recently and I, I still think he'll become a good player I think for Spurs he's a better player than Davinson Sanchez personally um, and I, I, he's still only young. I think he's 21 or 22. So I still think he's going to become a very good player and potentially get into the England squad. But if it, like in, I'm, I'm not sure. There's not many up, upcoming internationals between now and the World Cup, I don't think. But, you know, I, I think he'll definitely become a, a more... A, Important player for Tottenham in their like squads, like cement place in in Tottenham defence this year is my prediction. So uh, my second pick is Aston Villa's Jacob Ramsey. Um, I, I think he, he's bit, more recently. I think this season is the season where he's uh, started playing more regularly for Aston Villa. And he looks like a really good player. Um, he scored a cracking goal away at Arsenal a couple of months back. He, he scored a really good goal. If I can't remember how long ago it was. It might have been two weeks now. Uh, away at Norwich as well. Brilliant run and a good finish. Um, and he, he does look a really good player, I think, for Villa. Um, he's like a number eight. Uh, so like you've got John McGinn one side of the midfield and then he'll play on the left-hand side of the midfield. Mm. I say the left-hand side of the midfield, it's like the left of a three, really. It's not really left-mid. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think he'll become a very good player. Um, especially, I mean, with, with Stephen Gerrard as manager, I mean, who better is there to have as your manager when you like play in a similar position to what Gerrard played in his career? Um, so yeah, I, I think he stands a good chance of becoming a very important player for Aston Villa uh, this year. And I, I think he already is partly, to be honest. Uh, so it, it might even be a case of like, can he finish the season so strong that no offence to Aston Villa, he potentially puts himself um, like in the shop window for um, like... Again, no disrespect to Aston Villa, but to a side like, I don't know, Man City or Liverpool or even like a foreign team like, OK, Real Madrid, may, maybe not, but you, you get what I mean. Um, so I think he'll have a good year. And then another option, I've gone for Armando Broya. I'm not 100% sure how you say his surname. Is it Broja, Broja, Broja? I'm going to go with Broja. That, that, that seems... Uh, we'll call him Armando. <laughs> um, 
uh, he, he he's had a good start to the season for Southampton. He doesn't uh, always uh, play for them most of the time this season. I think so far they've played Armstrong and uh, Che Adams up front. But when he has played, he scores quite. If he scored quite a few goals this season, I think he might be on four or five goals for the season. And he hasn't played uh, like every minute of every game. Far from it. Um, and he's only actually on loan from Southampton. Uh, no, on loan to Southampton from Chelsea. Uh, so that means in the summer he will go back to Chelsea and. Chelsea, I still think, even with the signing of Lukaku this summer, I still think um, the number nine spot for Chelsea is like it's up for grabs still. Like Lukaku uh, hasn't had the great. He's, to say he hasn't had the great start at Chelsea is a bit of an understatement. He hasn't been horrendous, but he, I mean, he's been affected by injuries as well. But um, I still think there's a ch like you could get chances next season uh, for Chelsea uh, like even if it's just as a backup striker like the Tammy Abraham role um, at, at Chelsea but I think from what I've seen of him he seems to be a, like a very good striker um, like very good finisher um, but yeah I, I think he'll be a good player whether it's at Chelsea or not or you know whether it's another loan move next season, but I, I still think he'll uh, become a very good player. And I can't see, to be honest, why he isn't already starting for Southampton. Um, he seems to score a lot more than Armstrong and Che Adams do. Um, but my next player is Harvey Elliott, who had a good start to the season, the first two or three games. Um, but then I, I, he played against Leeds at uh, Ellen Road and unfortunately in like a, a tackle by Pascal Strike, it, it wasn't really a bad tackle, just unlucky the way it went um, and Harvey Elliott uh, like badly injured his ankle and he's, he's still injured from it even though it happened well over three months ago now. Um, but he did look very good for Liverpool in those first few games of the season. So if he can get back fit in a month or two's time, you know, he, he, I, he will get chances for Liverpool. And I, I think he can become a very good player from what I've seen of him. Uh, I've, I've seen quite a lot of him, actually, to be fair. For him. He played very well for Blackburn uh, on loan last season. Uh, I can't remember, but I think he might have been their player of the season. But he did have a very good season uh, for Blackburn last year. And he, he is a very talented player, good dribbler. Um, he's a very confident player. And I, I think he will become a good player. And my final pick is uh, West Ham's Ben Johnson. Um, I, th I think... From last season, one of West Ham's best players last season was uh, Vladimir Sufal. And Sufal hasn't played that many games this season. And partly that's down to how good Ben Johnson has been in his place. Um, he's very good going forward. He's also good defensively as well. He scored a good goal, if memory serves me right, away at Aston Villa, I think, in a... 4-1 win, I think they won 4-1, um, it, it was with his left foot actually, I think he managed to get into the bottom left corner, um, I, I might have got that wrong, but I think that's why it, how, how he scored, but he, he did, does look a good player whenever I watch him, uh, so I think he will also become a good player and could cement his uh, place at, uh, as uh, West Ham's right back. Um, so I think out of the five players I've mentioned, the one most likely to become like a big name next year, I think Harvey Elliott out of the five is probably the most talented from what I've seen. But at Liverpool, you're less likely to get game time as, say, Jacob Ramsey is at Aston Villa. So out of the five, I think I'll go with... 
I think I'll go with Jacob Ramsey because he, he, he every time I watch him, he, he looks like one of Villa's best players, um, especially since uh, Stephen Gerrard's taken over at uh, Aston Villa. So Jacob Ramsey is my pick to be the breakout star of uh, 2022. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.